Welcome, fellow basement dweller. I'm glad you're here. Do you ever get confused following the gold market, following the silver market? There are so many dynamics at play. It can be challenging to piece it all together. This week, we got big news from the Federal Reserve. They released their meeting notes. Also, we had employment numbers on Friday, which caused the price of gold and silver to skyrocket. Hey, we're not going to complain about that. I think even the bear was a little happy that that happened. Maybe you're happy as well. But what we can look at for sure is the history. We're going to look at the recent history. We're going to do a little wrap up of what went on last week, but then we're going to look at the big stories that occurred and see if we can paint a picture of where we think the price of gold and silver are headed in the coming months, quarters, and years. I'm glad you're here. Let's go on the journey right now. You remember being a little kid? Maybe you watched Charlie Brown and remember that classic scene when Lucy is holding the football for him Charlie Brown comes running up to kick the football, and at the last second, she pulls it away. And poor Charlie Brown, he goes flying through the air. It's a classic scene, and it's what it's felt like to be invested in gold, silver, and in particular, the precious metal mining stocks over the last few years. But are things about to change? Because last week, Gold started out at about $1,820 per ounce and ended the week around $1,870 per ounce. A spectacular start to 2023 for gold, up almost, what, two, two and a half percent. But what about the gold mining stocks? The GDXJ started the week at $35.65 per share. That's an ETF, by the way, and ended the week at... $39.48 per share, up almost 10%, if my math is correct. A great week for the gold mining stocks, and that bodes well for the price of gold going forward as well. Now, my shares didn't do so well. I own a significant amount of Fortuna Silver, and they had some bad news come out out of Mexico this week that sent the shares tumbling. So, you ever been in that situation in life where everybody else does great, but you don't do so great. That's how I feel right now. I'm happy, but a little envious of all you other gold mining stockholders who probably did much better than me last week. Congratulations. Couple quick things to mention about the gold mining stocks, and this relates to the silver mining stocks as well, but the GDXJ is still far away from its 52-week high of around $52 per share that it hit back in April of last year, just nine months ago. It would have to go up 30% from here just to get back to where it was at that point. And hey, the gold price where it sits today isn't that far off from where it was in April of 2022. The other important thing to remember is tax loss selling. A lot of people sell their losing investments toward the end of the year for tax purposes so they can recognize a loss on their taxes. That is done and over and should uh, eliminate some of the selling pressure we felt later in the year on some of the, in particular, junior mining gold stocks. And did you notice that silver didn't have a bad week, but didn't have a good week either? It was basically even for the week, right around $24 per ounce. $24 per ounce. Let's remember that just three short months ago, we were flirting with $17 per ounce. So this level's pretty darn good. The silver mining stocks did have a good week, up about 7%. The SIL ETF ended the week at $30.32 per share. And remember this, at $24 silver, the silver mining companies are almost all making great cash flow. And on a quick side note, have you noticed there's more and more electric cars? Every time I turn around, I saw the new Dodge Ram electric pickup truck. It actually looked pretty cool. Came out yesterday. And there's some other car. It's mod One of their models is called the Zero. It's from Holland, an electric car that they're talking about that is just absolutely awesome. Where do you think all the silver is going to come from for the batteries and for all the electronics in those electric cars? I digress. And I know you're dying to hear this next one. The S&P 500 was up 1.5% last week. So the general markets did pretty well. The 10-year bond yield was down 
from 3.88 all the way down to 3.57, a rather significant move in the 10-year bond. Now, the U.S. dollar, which is key for us gold and silver investors to follow, it was actually up. Started the week at 103.5, the DXY index, and ended the week at 103.92. Not a huge move up, but a move up nonetheless. But what's very interesting about that is traditionally the price of gold and silver react opposite, or if you want to use a fancy word, inverse to the U.S. dollar. So the fact that the U.S. dollar went up, gold and silver should have gone down, but gold in particular went up, and we know that silver stayed even for the week. That's a very interesting development and a potential key development. And what about our favorite child of the crypto world, Bitcoin? Yes, unicorn fart dust. How did it do last week? It went from 16,600 all the way up to 16,900 per coin. So maybe Michael Saylor and Max Kaiser and some of those guys, I don't know if they want to turn their both their laser eyes back on, but maybe they can turn one of their laser eyes back on. Hey, we wish the best for the crypto world and Bitcoin in particular. Thank you, my fellow basement dweller, for joining me today here in Ron's Basement, because you know why? You are special. Your time's important, and I honor the fact that you, yes, you from somewhere in the world, have decided to join me right now here in Ron's Basement. I hope you feel like you found a home. Hey, we are a sliver of a sliver of the population. This will never be the world's biggest YouTube channel because you are not part of the herd. I'm not part of the herd. But we can come together here, talk about these interesting subjects, and have some camaraderie. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe. Subscribe is what I'm trying to say. Give the video a thumbs up. Now let's get back to the matter at hand. So gold looked really strong last week. It's key for us to remember, gold does not look at the present situation. Gold has a crystal ball. Gold looks around the corner. Gold tries to see the forest through the trees, and when it's doing that, it's seeing a future environment conducive to higher precious metals prices. Let me read something for you from David Erfley. He writes the Junior Mighty Miner Junker Junkie, something like that, if I can talk, newsletter. I want to quote something he said about the gold stocks in particular. He said, in fact, major mining companies are currently at one of the most undervalued levels in history. The aggregate P-E ratio for the precious metal and base metals miners in the S&P 500 Metals and Minings Index, that's a mouthful, is at its lowest level since the great financial crisis when gold stocks made a seven-year cycle low. So gold and gold mining stocks are still undervalued. And what did you think about the big Big news story of the week. The employment numbers that came out, they actually beat 230,000 jobs created, expectations 200,000. That should have been bad for the price of gold and silver. That should have made us sad, but buried in the report was the fact that wage growth has stalled. People aren't getting increases in their wages, and that spells a lower diminishing uh, amount of inflation because wage growth is a major component of the inflation calculation. That was received by the market as good news in regards to the fact that the Fed is, sure, Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve are winning the fight on inflation uh, in that they can pivot maybe a little sooner. The market, just even with the slightest hints of a pivot coming, is blasting off and we're seeing what's happening with the price of gold and silver. The other big story of the week they hit us with were the notes from the December meeting of Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve. It was basically a nothing burger, okay? There was nothing unexpected in it. They're still squawking their hawk squawk saying, we'll raise rates as much as we have to to fight inflation, blah, blah, blah. Well, good luck with that, guys, because you're in a box and you're trapped. And 2023 is going to be a big year where a decision is going to have to be made by the Fed. Do we crash the economy or do we let inflation run wild? It's going to be a very conducive environment for the price of gold and silver. 
And are you starting to notice that the Fed's losing a little bit of its credibility? I don't know about you, but I just get this feeling that it's not just us, but it's a lot of people that are kind of looking at the Fed saying, uh, yeah, guys, uh, what are you going to do next? And people are feeling uncertain. And you know what does well during times of uncertainty? Gold and silver. And on a big scale, geopolitical level, the world is still really screwed up. We have geopolitical risk right now on a serious note like we've never had in history. We have China buddying up with Saudi Arabia. We have Russia buddying up with China. We have the world bifurcating, the world splitting in two, and things continue to move in a direction which isn't so great for the United States of America. It is going to be a very interesting 2023. And when major geopolitical risk uh, is the, the, the mood of the day, again, that's a very conducive, supportive environment for the price of gold and silver. No matter how it all plays out, I'll be here for you through it all, even stagflation in the basement. Know that you can join me anytime. I'm going to look forward to seeing you next time. Be well.